Falcons are awful. They are terrible. And uh, actually, it's a great segue because they got worse on Tuesday. They <laughs> traded Muhammad Sanu to the uh, to the New England Patriots for a second round pick. This is surprising, I think, because uh, nobody. I don't think most people believe that Muhammad Sanu would fetch a second round pick. He does have one more year on his contract. Um, he is a very interesting player, but not a high volume player. I predicted on Tuesday morning after the trade happened that he will throw a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl. And that's exactly why the Patriots were willing to give up a second round pick because their second round picks, Brady, are probably more like a third round pick. How do you like this addition of Mohamed Sanu to the New England Patriots? Before I answer that, how fast until someone mentions 28 to three? How fast? To him? Yes. Uh, 10, 15 seconds after he walks in the door. <laughs> Do you think there'll be a big banner where they're like, hey, you're on our side now. Sorry about that. Well, uh, do, you, well, do you remember when there's a clip of him at the Super Bowl and he's like, we're hanging 40 on these boys. And it's like, I have some bad news. Yeah, it's not going to work out. Uh, maybe revisionist history. You know, He can try to block it out in his mind. Look, this is a great pickup for the Patriots for this reason. Uh, he's versatile. He can play in the slot. He can play in the backfield. He can play out wide. Uh, and he can run a variety of routes. He, he's got good hands. He's tough. He's physical. He's perfect for Josh McDaniel's system. And I think this tells you a little bit about maybe what they think of Josh Gordon right now. And we know he's battled some stuff off the field in the past. It would be concerning for me moving forward with them making this move. But you bring up a great point, Will. You know, their second-round pick is – I mean, it's outside the top 60 players year in, year out in the draft because they're always finishing, usually in the AFC Championship game, if not the Super Bowl. So because of that, uh, they have a hard time being able to even draft guys who have first-round grades because their first-round draft pick is usually uh, somewhere 30, 31, 32. And so if that's the case, why not? I mean, you're most likely just going to move on the draft anyway to try to target certain players. So I have no problem with them giving up a second-round pick for a guy who's a proven commodity in the league, perfect fit for their system, and they still got him for another year and a half. So it makes complete sense. I think I saw a stat uh, earlier today. Their entire wide receiver group, they all have them this year in the salary cap for like 13 or 13 and a half million bucks. Think about that. Their entire group combined in salaries equates to like 13 million and change. When you look at some of the other players and what they're getting, in particular a guy like Julio Jones, for example, on the Atlanta Falcons and how much cap space he takes up. So uh, they seem to do more with less. This is a great fit, uh, a good trade in my opinion. And by the way, it could work out for both parties. You know, obviously Atlanta's looking to build towards the future. If any of the other teams had traded a second-round pick for Mohamed Sanu, we'd be crushing them right now. But you guys are right. This pick is going to be in the 60s. And perhaps more important than that, the Patriots are absolutely terrible at drafting guys in the second round. You go back to 2013 um, through this uh, last draft, they have one guy on the roster, two guys if you count Jordan Richards, who you probably know, have, no, have no idea who that is, who they just re-signed in October after cutting him a few years ago. 2013 was Aaron Dobson. He's out of the league. 2014, Jimmy GQ was traded. I mentioned Richards. Cyrus Jones is now playing with the Ravens. They didn't have a, 20, uh, a second rounder in 2017. Duke Dawson lasted one year. Uh, before he was, um, before he moved on to Denver, and then Jawan Williams, the the cornerback out of Vandy, has played 22 snaps this year. Makes a ton of sense. The defense isn't the problem. The offense is, is a huge issue, relatively speaking. This certainly helps Tom Brady. So yeah, this is an A plus trade. Uh, the Falcons, meanwhile, have a lot of salary cap issues, so they're they're accumulating picks, but they have a ton of work to do. I would say that with the Patriots' success on defense. And I think there's an argument seven weeks in that they may very well be the greatest defense of all time, seven weeks into the season. I know they haven't played anybody, but they're locking everybody down. we got to see them go against Lamar and, and Dak and uh, Patrick Mahomes, we hope, and Carson Wentz and everybody else. But statistically speaking, they're right there with the other great defenses. Um, their offense isn't very good. It's just, it's just not that great. I mean, Tom Brady's awesome. I'm sure he'll figure it out. I'm not worried about that in the slightest. But they don't run the ball effectively, and they miss, they're miss they missing some of their pass catchers. And I think you're spot on, Brady, when you point out that Josh Gordon may not be guaranteed to stick around, and Sanu can play outside or inside, a bigger-bodied type of guy. I, I don't know what I would do fantasy value-wise in terms of Sanu. I mean, I think this helps him because the Falcons are terrible and – I mean, Matt Ryan's banged up, but the Patriots are so good at distributing the ball around that I don't know that he's somebody you're necessarily going to want to start on a regular basis. Uh, Calvin Ridley, this should help. 
uh, Austin Hooper, this should help in terms of a bump up, although they could be missing Matt Ryan. So we'll see about that. Hey, um, you know, I'm supposed to go to an Emmanuel Sanders trade thing, but I, I want to ask you, Brady, what do you think about the notion floated by uh, Adam Schefter on Monday night that, and he said this on the set of Monday night countdown or like when they're on the field, like everyone's watching it because it's leading up to the game, the only game on TV. So you don't float this if it's not something that is, I don't know, you believe in, right? And he thinks Tom Brady is set, quote, setting himself up to leave New England by putting his house on the market, his trainer's house is on the market, and uh, his contract's up. Do you buy or sell that idea? Uh, I, I sell that idea because if he's doing that, then he's doing that because he's done playing football. He's retiring. I can't see him going to another team. Uh, I just It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, Is there maybe curiosity to see what it would be like to play – under a different head coach and a different system where you can prove to people like, hey, it wasn't just because I was a quarterback under Bill Belichick. Like, I had a lot to do with it. I, I don't feel like he needs to do that. And I, I don't – he doesn't strike me as the type uh, to want to do that and, and start all over again. I think any quarterback that's done that, you can talk to Peyton Manning about even his transition to a really, really good Denver Broncos team that had defense, had good receivers uh, when he first got over to, to the Broncos – there was a transition period. There was a lot of guys who had a hard time catching on with the offense, with the language and the verbiage and everything changing every single week. So uh, I'm not sure Tom Brady would want to do that. Uh, and, and I think he's close with Josh McDaniels and uh, loves playing within that system. So uh, if that was the case, it would be because he's moving on to a different stage in his life, not to a different organization. But I'm not going to read into it too much right now. I, I think we, we're, we're so – we're always looking to try to be the first to call when we see the end or the beginning of the end. Can we just cherish this? I mean, I don't know that we're ever going to see a guy at 42 years old be able to play at this high of a level. And, and he's the greatest of all time, in my opinion. I think he's got the greatest resume when you look at what he's done with the New England Patriots. And for such a long period of time, in the beginning of his career, middle and end, uh, I, I think we, we need to cherish what we have in him right now because it's regardless of what people think with sports science, nutrition, everything else changed, you're not going to see people being as good as Tom Brady is right now, 42 years old in the future. Mm. Hot takes from Brady on Brady. That's what I'm talking about. Brady talks Brady. That could be your, you could do a, a Tom Brady only podcast where you yeah, only and, talk about Brady. It'd be Brady on Brady. Well, and, and, and just from watching the game last night, granted that the New York Jets doesn't have the best defense, but you know, offensively, you could say they're struggling. I, I, look, I think they've got a different motive. They want to try to run the football uh, to me, I watch them operate with it within that system masterfully. And, and I think their offensive line obviously is not playing quite as well as they'd like. Uh, but this is still a really good offensive team. I think when they need to turn it on, they can. Uh, and, and so I'm not as concerned maybe as, as you seem to sound about their offense or about Tom Brady not right now, Will. Uh, and and I, I know it's a you know, polarizing difference from you know, looking how good their defense is playing compared to their offense. Uh, but still, like, I'm not concerned about this team on the offensive side of the football right now. I should I should probably say what I I should probably clarify what I what I said when I said that their offense stinks. I don't think their offense stinks. In fact, their offense is exactly what I said it would be before the season repeatedly. It's going to be a Ferrari in the garage type of offense. They have a great defense that's going to lock people down. They have a crap schedule. They have a garbage division. The Bills are okay, but they're probably the worst five and one team we've seen in a few years. Worse even than that Alex Smith uh, Chiefs team. Um, the, the Patriots are going to. They've taken their odds off the off the board in some spots in Vegas because it's such a lock that the Patriots are going to win the division. And so um, I think what they want to do is they want to go out there and be physical and pound the ball, live in the short yardage passing game take some shots downfield when they can, but by and large, just get to January and February healthy. And then they know that they just have to win three games uh, because they'll have that buy more than likely with Patrick Mahomes getting hurt, just win three games and you got another Super Bowl. I think that's their formula. They just, they don't, they don't need to blow people out. Do you agree or disagree, Ryan? Or Brandon? Of course. No, that's exactly right. And the only issue I mean, this offense isn't what we've seen it be, but that's fine. Bill Belichick seems to have some idea what he's doing. The only issue I have, is and this has been an issue for as long as Tom Brady and Bill Belichick have been together, is why does he continue to leave Tom Brady in the game late? Now, I know he took Tom Brady out earlier in the season. Jared Stidham came in through a pick six. He put Tom Brady back in. It's just going to take one injury, and that's going to be a wrap because you're not coming back from that. Otherwise, I have no issue with anything Bill Belichick does, even trying to, to uh, run back-to-back -back, uh, false starts and or delay games to, to anger Adam Gase. 
I love the fact that he did that, by the way, because everyone thinks it's about angering what? Adam Gase, but at the same time, it did reveal a little bit of a loophole in the rules that I'm sure will be changed come next year when the competition committee uh, is looking at the fact that he was able to milk, what, like a minute and 20 seconds off the clock or whatever it ended up being, uh, even though he was taking back-to-back -back penalties. So he's a genius. He's brilliant. I can't remember who exactly I was talking to about this, but they were discussing how Bill Belichick knows like what the market is for a free agent off the street or like a practice squad player more so than anyone else. Uh, you know, he, he looks at it almost like the stock market every day and understands the rates that comes along with signing one of those guys and just how to handle the cap. So uh, he's just so tuned in on everything from the salary cap to the rules and, and where there's gray area and where he can maybe force the league to make it more black and white. Uh, and it's a little bit more defined. Otherwise, they're just going to keep kind of pressing that issue uh, until someone makes it more defined. I, I love that about them. Uh, I love the dominance that they continually show. And just they, they always make you feel like they're always just a one step ahead of everyone else. And I know sometimes that feels like, you know, maybe they're doing something wrong or like they've got an unfair advantage. But I just think it's how smart that entire organization is, in particular, Bill Belichick. It's Bill Belichick. It, it is amazing. I know we got to move on. And Debo is going to yell at me in a minute. That's fine. I don't care. Um, Bill Belichick is like, is like a master strategist, a old school football coach, a like high end economist, and like a like a, a Supreme Court level lawyer all wrapped into one. He knows every single thing about every single rule and knows every single loophole that he can exploit to win in terms of the rule book and in terms of roster building. And he also, like you said, Brady has a valuation on everything, and he knows, as you pointed out as well, uh, that you can. It's like. You know, people are like, oh, they win because the quarterback's cheap. It's like, well, they also don't pay anything for the wide receivers, ever. Like, they never pay anything for the wide receivers or their running backs. He's smart like that. So, um, yeah, the uh, Patriots are pretty good.